Here we are guys, back again with a brand new season of the Newcastle United Career Mode series. This is season 3. Last season was special. We had a ridiculous cup final against West Ham which we ended up winning, hence making us two-time FA Cup winners in this series. And let's not forget, we managed to finish 4th in the Premier League and that gets us into the Champions League this season and I cannot wait to see how we fare. Before anything else, you guys know we've got a new kit sponsor for the season and it's Adidas, so let's take a look at the new kits we've got for Season 3. Presenting our new kits for the season with Adidas as the sponsor. So the first one, we've got a nice light blue kit. I absolutely love this one. This is going to be our third kit for the season. Looks pretty amazing. Next up, we've got our goalkeeper kits for the season. Another super clean design. I think the green looks really good for the keeper. Nick Bob's going to look fantastic in this one. This is what we're rocking for our away kits for the season. A super clean yellow design. I love the purple on it as well. By the way, this was a bit of a controversial one because I had initially planned to use another kit. But on Twitch, you guys in the chat made me or convinced me to use this one. So again, follow me on Twitch for all such conversations. But this is our away kit for the season. Our home kit for the season is ready and take a look at it. Adidas is the sponsor, of course. I think it looks pretty good. There isn't really much wriggle room you get to make changes to the Newcastle home kit because you need to have the stripes. But I still feel like this looks pretty darn amazing. So, yep, those are our kits for the season. Also want to thank everyone who sent in their kits because you guys make this series special, man. Honestly, our kits are ready for the season. Let's kick things off. Honestly, guys, I couldn't be more excited for season three. There's just so much to do this season. We've got Youth Academy players coming back. Champions League for the first time in this series. We can have a big budget to make signings as well. This could be the season where we take Newcastle to a completely new level. And that's why I'm absolutely excited for this one. If you guys are as well, if you guys are enjoying the Newcastle career mode, I'd really appreciate it if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. And tell you what, if you guys can smash out 4,000 likes, I'll get you an episode tomorrow. How about that? So drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get things underway. You guys know how we start off a new season. Let's look at the squad we've got at our disposal. And honestly, it's better than ever. Tammy Abraham up top. We know how good he is. We've got Buendia, Toliso, Phillips, St. Maximin, Almiron. This team is genuinely insane. Like every player in the starting 11 is above the overall of 80. We've got a very strong bench as well with the likes of Longstaff, Willock, Fraser, Wilson. And of course, we've got a few players returning from their loan spell like Mbake. I'm pretty sure Matthew Longstaff's going to be back in the squad soon as well. So we're looking very good for our setup for season three. The Newcastle board are backing us for this season, which is awesome. I've already added the 8 million signing bonus we're getting from the Adidas deal. And with that, we've got 78 million as our transfer budget for the season with 170,000 as our wage budget. We could do business this season and I'm ready for it. Before we get into all the transfer business, time for a press conference. Do you realize that you relegated Burnley by scoring five? They only went down by goal difference. So if you guys watched the season finale, which I uploaded a few days ago, we scored five goals against Burnley on pretty much the final match day. Almiron scored a screamer at the end, which was probably goal of the season as well. And that was the goal that relegated Burnley to the championship. I just can't believe it, man. Finally, I get one over Burnley and it was a beautiful moment. In fact, go subscribe to my shorts channel. I'll have it linked maybe in the description or the i button. There's a cool video about Burnley getting relegated as well. But my God, was that a satisfying moment. Next up, St. Maximin's training to become a left winger is complete. Convert him and he will go up in his overall. Yep, I noticed that and I've already done it. And that's why Alan St. Maximin is already 88 rated. This season, man, he could be one of the best players in the world. Next up, Fabian Shah has been very solid for these two seasons, but he will soon start going down in his overall. Do you have any replacement options? I'm not, as of now, looking to replace Fabian Shah completely, but I feel like it is about time we add in another centre-back to compete with both Conde and Fabian Shah, because right now, Damit's gonna leave, Fafana's loan is gonna complete, and that means we need at least a couple more centre-backs for squad depth purposes. Keep in mind, we're in the Champions League this season, so signing a centre-back, and preferably a good one, to give Fabian Shah and Conde competition could be the play, but I still feel like all three of them 
will be getting ample amount of game time this season simply because the amount of games we're gonna have to play will be insane so with that press conference done just a bit of appreciation for Tammy Abraham for having an unbelievable season season two was all about Tammy Abraham he just kept on scoring goal after goal after goal and well with that he won player of the season before we actually go ahead and make new signings, we're going to have to make a decision whether we want to settle the buy option on Nuno Tavares or not. And I feel like it just makes sense to do so. I know 19.5 million is a fair bit of money, but let's be real. He's valued at 24 million. He's 22, one of the most promising left backs in the world. I think I want to do it. I want to settle the buy option. And let's now get the contract negotiations done and make technically our first signing of season three this is what i'm offering nuno tavares for the contract we've got only one shot at making it happen so i may be overpaying but i don't want to mess things up and not be able to sign him for this season so thirty thousand per week a two hundred thousand signing bonus rotation squad role let's see if he accepts this offer and he does Nuno Tavares is our first signing of season 3. Look at that boys, a lot of players are leaving the club. As I said, our squad is pretty thin now and we need to really focus on squad depth. So depending on that, just let me know your transfer suggestions as well. Fofana is back to Leicester City. I might look to try and set up another loan deal for him with maybe like a buyout clause or something. Like, you know, a buyback or whatever that's called, loan to buy basically. That might be smart because I really like Fofana. And he's a good four-choice centre-back to have. So we might try and pull that off. Um, Muto has left the club. Couldn't care less. Dummett has left the club. He's been a good servant, so fair play. And one of our Youth Academy prospects, Natkins, has gone out on loan. Talking about Youth Academy players, well, Mbaki and Dylan Miles are back at the club. And I feel this season they're going to play an important part as squad rotation players. And hopefully they'll grow massively in their overall. We need to do a lot of work with them though, because Mbaki with that one-star skill move, that needs to improve if he wants to play as a forward. And with Dylan Miles, we got to step things up with his pace. As I said before, I'm definitely looking in the market to sign defenders. That is definitely a play. But apart from that, I'm also looking to sell players like Fraser, maybe even Buendia, depending on what kind of offers we get for them. And maybe even Isaac Hayden, because we've got now the two Longstaff brothers in the setup. And they're enough backup for Toliso and Phillips. So there's going to be a lot of business going on in this transfer window, especially in terms of selling players and generating more funds. Maybe if we can generate enough money, we could go in big for the centre-back to improve the defence massively. That could, could be the play, especially since Shah has turned 30. We need to figure things out. If you guys have any ideas, keep the suggestions coming in. Okay, we get a couple of transfer offers for Buendia, and this is interesting. A good amount of money as well, about 25 million. I think we can definitely get a bit more for him. So let's negotiate with both Marseille and Liverpool and see how much each club is willing to pay. Remember, guys, we've got a sell-on clause on Buendia, so it's not going to be a good deal in our favour. But I tried, you know, doing some swap deals with him. No club seems to want him, so it's... Yep, it's, we've got no choice. If we want to sell Buendia, which I kind of do, because I feel like it's time Willock plays first choice for us, because he's basically been doing that. And I think Dylan Miles and Mbaki can be back up, so I'm pretty happy with that outcome. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to counter to Marseille with 30 million and see if they're willing to accept that. And 30 million actually works for Marseille, so... Well, that's that. I want to see if it's possible to sign Wesley Fofana on a loan to buy deal. That could be really helpful for us. If not, we can actually just sign him for 10 million right now. But I'd rather get the loan to buy deal working because that gives us more money to use right now. So we can loan Fofana again. I want to see if a two-year loan deal is possible because that would be huge. Because we'll only have to pay the money for him after two seasons. It sounds very practical. Let's see if Brendan Rodgers is willing to accept a two-year loan deal. Nope, one year, I think he knows what's up. So a one-year loan deal for Fafana. And let's settle the buy option now. Um, We got only got to pay 40% of the wages. That's that's brilliant. Maybe we can reduce that even more. Let's make it 30%. Let's see what they say. No, 40% is the least Brendan is willing to go. Okay, that's fine, 40%. And now, what even is that sell-on clause? 8.2 million and a sell-on clause of 65%. I have never seen that in career mode before. That is the highest sell-on clause ever. 65% of a future transfer. To be fair, guys, if we do sign for Fana, are we really going to sell him? Like, honestly, are we really going to sell him? I don't think so. I, don't, I think he's the kind of player that it will be in the setup for a long, long time. And I don't think we're ever going to sell him. So, I'm okay. 8.2 million, it seems like a bargain after a season to buy him. So, I'm going to accept this. It works for me. 
8.2 million for Wesley Fofana. The signing is done. In other news, Buendia has just been sold. He's had a few good moments. Who remembers that free kick, guys, early on in the series? That was superb, but it's time to offload him. We've sold him for 30 million, 20 million added on to our transfer budget, and we're rocking at 78.37 million brilliant so far in this episode i think we've done some really really solid business we completed the nuno tavares signing for 19 million we loaned in fofana again but this time with a loan to buy option so that is superb i think i'm going to keep the big signings now for the next episode because i want to see what you guys think what are your opinions where do you guys think we need to sign improvements because i feel like defense could be the play we need another center back that is 100 for sure because injuries happen and we'll be really in a terrible spot. So, defender 100%. I'm not too keen on improving the midfield because we've got Philip Stoliso, the Longstaff brothers, Mbake and Dylan Miles can play cam. Willick has been unbelievable with his player growth, so I want to keep him in that cam spot as a starter. Even striker Abraham Wilson works perfectly fine. I am, though, considering signing a right winger. Because Almiron, as good as he is, having a backup option could be nice. Or maybe... Spending big on that right side, getting a player better than Almiron could be the play, guys. That could be the play. I think, you know what? That might be it. We should sign a right winger that's world class to add to our attack. I'm thinking we do that as well. Hmm. That could be the smart play. But we might need to make a decision whether to improve the right wing or the center back spot more, which is going to be a tricky one. You guys let me know in the comment section. Those are the only two spots I think we need, like really good improvements. Right wing and center back we're going to be keeping those signings for the next episode though so keep your suggestions coming in in the comments section below and also i know you guys are wondering what about the new shirt sponsor what about objective so yep we're gonna have new shirt sponsors for next season like how we had jeep there's gonna be different this time around so the objectives and all will be revealed once we're done with the trans window so just be a bit patient, it'll be coming soon. Guess what guys, we've got the FA Community Shield final to play now and I'm super hyped for this one. Last season we won this, I'm hoping we can do it again. Beating Liverpool would be nice. We've really got the better of Liverpool almost every time in this series. In the FA Cup, we knocked them out twice in the semis. Let's beat them in the Community Shield and win our fourth silverware, our fourth trophy. Let's do it. Is Joe Willock ready to step up now? I mean, we're trusting him with that first choice spot. He was in incredible form last season. Let's hope he can take it to the next level in this one. I'm just thinking, guys. I don't think we've ever lost at Wembley so far in this series, which is incredible. And let's keep that run of form going as we take on Liverpool. Wembley, Community Shield final, the curtain raiser of the season. Let's add another trophy to our cabinet. And this is the team I'm going with. Abraham, St. Maximin, Willick starts Toliso. Practically our team from last season, we're yet to make the major signings, we're keeping that for the next episode. Nuno Tavares starts as well. Liverpool's team though looks pretty good. They've got Van Dijk at the back, but no uh, Robertson and no Matip or of course Joe Gomez, which is good. Fabinho Wijnaldum, no Salah or Mane. That is very interesting. Well, let's see what we can do. And by the way, I've got Dylan Miles and Mbaki on the bench, so you guys might be seeing them in action getting their debut in this one if things are going well for us. By the way, we're debuting our third kits for this one. I thought it'd be really fun to use our third kits for the final like this and just show them off. And well, this is it, guys. Community Shield final. We've got ample of experience at Wembley. We've knocked out Liverpool twice in the FA Cup in this series. Let's get the better of them again. If I'm not wrong, I think Liverpool was the team we also beat in last season's Community Shield final. So... Yep, we've really been Liverpool's pain in the ass in this series and I'm loving it boys, so let's hope we can beat them again. Looks for Miguel Almiron, maybe another goal of the season contender from Almiron, going for that finesse shot. Oh my god, I literally called it Miguel Almiron. What a start of the game, within six minutes, Almiron has just scored an absolute screamer. What? How has he even done that? Miguel Almiron, we've just been talking about potentially getting a better winger than him and he does this? No chance for Alisson. We take the lead in the Community Shield final. An absolute belter of a goal from Almiron. Very similar to last season what he scored at the very end to, you know, relegate Burnley. But this was unbelievable to do that in a final. Oh my god, it takes guts. And well, Almiron really showed what he's all about. Starts off the season on a fantastic note. Miguel Almiron scores and Newcastle United 1-0 up in the Community Shield final. 
What a strike, boys. Honestly, what a strike. I feel like in this series, we are Liverpool's bogey team. They just don't know what to do against us. Like, that's how it feels like. Because every time we play them, they're just struggling so much. Like, we've knocked them twice in the FA Cup. I'm pretty sure we've beaten them in the league a couple of times. And yeah, in the Community Shield final, we beat them last season. And now again, we're looking very likely to get a result against them. It's crazy. Wijnaldum looks for a good pass and Liverpool looking to get back in the game. Nick Pope thankfully came forward, collected that. We can't let Liverpool score because I don't want this game being one all. And then, you know, a lot of variables kicks in. So let's just keep our lead intact and maybe add to it as Almiron looks for Tammy Abraham. Could get his first of the season. Goes for the chip. St. Maximin on the rebound. And from seconds away, Liverpool to score. We've just countered them and scored again. Newcastle United, 2-0 up, St. Maximin getting in on the action, we're 2-0 cruising against Liverpool, this is unbelievable. I mean, to be fair, the team we've got right now is more than capable of beating sides like Liverpool, but it's still crazy to think that we've taken Newcastle in a couple of seasons, and now the third season, from being at, what, bottom of the Premier League, 17th and all, to now this, this, is, this could be our fourth trophy of the season, man, and that is just incredible, guys, honestly. What a header from uh, St. Maximin. I mean, it was a tap-in, but still. Right place, right time. We're 2-0 up in 26 minutes. That's mad. Here we go. Now, Miguel Almiron. I see St. Maximin making a good run, so I'm going for the ball for him. Oh, my God, off the crossbar. Unbelievable attempt from St. Maximin. I want to say this would have been goal of the season contender. You guys can mark me off in the comment section, but really, man, what, a, what an attempt from St. Maximin, honestly. Huh, and we might have another chance at Oliso. Looks for St. Maximin. Can he open his body up? He can, but he went with his left foot for some reason. I thought he was going to try and curl it in with his right, but it's, it's unbelievable the chances we're creating against Liverpool. Oh, wait, this was offside, but Liverpool look as clueless as they get. Half time, though, and I just couldn't be more happier with the outcome. We're absolutely dismantling this Liverpool side. And you know what? Since we're playing so well, I think in this second half, I want to bring on some of the Youth Academy players and give them their debut. A bit of experience in a final like this. We're doing it, guys. I'm so excited to bring on Dylan Miles at Cam for Joe Willock and see how he fares. We're also going to bring on Mbake for Almiron on that right side or the left side. And that's fine. We'll play him on the right side. He loses less overalls for some reason over there. And, of course, we will also give Matthew Longstaff a game after such a long time in that midfield spot. So... Three youngsters coming in. Let's see how they fare. By the way, we need to like make this left wing. There you go. St. Maximin gets a better boost then. Well, let's see how the Youth Academy players fare. I'm so excited to see them in action. Longstaff. Looks now for Dylan Miles. And look at the space he's got here to work with. Goes for goal. Oh my god. Off the crossbar and off the ground. How? How did that not go in? So unlucky there, Dylan Miles. Would have been lovely as he tries to cross cleared away. That was his moment. Imagine scoring on your Newcastle debut like that against Liverpool. We've hit the crossbar now, I think, twice in this one. Unbelievable. Wijnaldum looks for the ball for Roberto Firmino. And there's a goal back for Liverpool. Maybe making all those changes could cost us. Hopefully not. But Liverpool get a goal back in the 60th minute of this one. And there's a lot of time left. And we don't have a lot of our experienced players now. And that could be a problem. That could really be a problem. Have I made a tactical blunder? Hopefully not, guys. Hopefully not. Could look for the pass for Mbake. Finds Mbake. Chance for him to score. Goes for goal. Blocked away from Liverpool. We're creating chances. The youngsters are playing really well. And they do look like they've got what it takes to play at a high level this season itself. And they just need to get that finishing touch sorted. Because they could have both of them could have had a goal tonight. Oh my god. Wijnaldum shoots off the post. I'm, I'm actually glad that came off the post. Because... We've had all the bad luck in this game, hitting the post and the crossbar a few times. So, for once, it's good that Liverpool are suffering from the same fate. But the, the margins are too close right now between us and them. We need to, you know, settle this game. And Tammy Abraham might be able to do just that. Big save again from Alisson. What's going on in this one, guys? How are the keepers just playing so well? And the ref blows the final whistle. Thankfully, making all those changes didn't cost us. We gave valuable time to play to all the youngsters, which was awesome to see. And Newcastle United pick up a 2-1 win over Liverpool in the Community Shield final. What a way to win another trophy, guys. It was superb. The first half performance, the couple of goals we scored. Almiron with a screamer in this one. What a hit from him. Just completely settled things for us. And well, there you go. We're lifting the Community Shield final trophy. Let's go, boys.
That is another one added to our trophy cabinet, which is superb to see. It's going to be Fabian Shah. That's his fourth trophy he's now winning in a couple of seasons with Newcastle. How mental is that? absolutely brilliant and as i said we've just added the community shield to our trophy cabinet now that we've wrapped up the community shield final it's time to begin another season in the premier league last season we finished fourth champions league guaranteed this season i really feel like the team is ready to take that next step and maybe fight for the title i feel like we've got the squad look at our team guys and we're yet to make the major signings which we'll be doing next episode onwards so i feel like this could be the season we push for the Premier League title. We've got a very complete squad, a lot of youngsters coming through as well. This is it. I'm ready, guys, for this season. So we're going to be in this episode starting off with our Premier League season. First game against Brighton. Let's win it. Time for a brand new season in the Premier League. We're up against a five at the back Brighton defence, which, yep, is not going to be fun to play against. But look at the team I've put forward. I'm starting the Longstaff brothers together for this one i want to see how they play they're much better than what they were at the start of this series and let's see them in action jamal lewis returns to the lineup will it start sin cam and yeah premier league first game of the season let's start off with a win have a look at that guys we're using our brand new away kits for this one i love the look of these, these kits i'm glad my twitch chat convinced me for the, these kits to use because yeah they look brilliant long staff driving the ball forward looks for his brother sean and now we could maybe find Willock. Could we be seeing Willock score his first of the season? Strikes it well, but it's straight at the keeper. First chance of the game and Joe Willock really should have converted that. Joe Willock again bringing the ball forward. Tammy Abraham looks for Joe Willock who's broken through. He's done this so often in this series. Joe Willock goes for the chip. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant from Joe Willock. And that's exactly why he is going to be our starter this season. He has that special something in him unbelievable the audacity to chip the keeper like that with that height on that chip just stunning simply stunning that was just unbelievable off the post and in it was it had to be perfect otherwise it was not going in and it absolutely was joe willock just took a peek there at, at the spot he wanted to put the ball in he looked at that and well did it that's joe willock for you unbelievable guys 1-0 up against Brighton. We start off our Premier League season with a beauty like that. Brighton on the charge here. McAllister looks for the pass inside, but Fabian Shaw with a strong block, although Brighton still looking to bring it forward. Chance for them here. Good dribbling. Good pick out as well. Nick Pope with the solid save. I've got to say, Brighton are giving us a tough game. I'm finding this a lot more harder than the Liverpool game for some reason. McAllister looks to break through here. Good play from him. Solid defending again. It's been a defensive masterclass so far from us in this one. Fabian Shaw now driving the ball forward. Cleverly down to find Joe Willock. And I see Miguel Almiron making a run. Taps it forward. Here he goes. Miguel Almiron stops the ball. Ah, that was that ruined it. That completely ruined it. I had to get it onto his left foot. Otherwise, nothing was going to happen from that attack. McGinn looking for that pass inwards. But that's another good challenge. How many times am I going to say this? We've been absolutely perfect defensively in this game do we even need another center back by the way things are looking probably not half time we're cruising in this game i mean it's only one nil but brighton have barely posed the threat ah oh, no way is McAllister broken through he goes for the chip no way out of, from dominating this entire game we've conceded out of nowhere brighton make it one one uh, i shouldn't have said we were cruising in the first half you just know when you're one nil up something like this happens and everything just yeah goes uh, ballistic i guess so uh, 1-1 one, one. i don't know how McAllister managed to get in behind nick Pope being 6-7 couldn't stop that chip shot and it's 1-1 one, one. i think it's time for some changes as well i'm gonna bring on our big guns in the midfield so we've got calvin phillips coming on and we'll also have to Liso be brought on for this one guys let's hope this helps change things here we go saint maximin is making that run if he can get there he can saint maximin good spot goes for goal oh my god saint maximin that is a pile driver from him just smash through that one it goes right in the back of the net and we get our lead in this game again it's newcastle to brighton one and that is a big relief guys because i don't want to be dropping points in our first game of the premier league season saint maximin makes it 2-1 Joe Willock has scored in this game and now an assist as well. He's having a phenomenal start to his season. 2-1 up Newcastle. There you have it guys. We start off our Premier League season with a 2-1 win. And this was a tricky game. But I'm glad we come out on top. We start 
the season the way we needed to with a win away from home as well. I'll take it. We've had the perfect start of the season, guys. I mean, winning the Community Shield final and the first Premier League game of the season. Next episode, though, is all about making those signings, the big boy signings, to improve our team even further. So keep the suggestions coming in. Player of the episode for me is a tricky one. I thought defensively we were superb and one of Fabian Shah and Conde deserves a bit of credit. But then again, Willock with that chip and that assist as well to win us the game. What an episode he had. And also Almiron scoring a screamer in the cup final. So it's a tricky one, guys. Let me know in the comment section who you think deserves to win player of the episode. For now though, guys, this is where we're wrapping things up. Season 3 is in full flow. Next episode, transfers, Champions League group reveal. Maybe we'll keep that for the episode after, but... You guys will get that soon. If you're enjoying this series, keep the support coming in. As I said, 4,000 likes and I'll get you an episode tomorrow. Subscribe if you're new around here and I'll catch you all next time.